Hi, it's The Wire. It's Saturday, May 21st, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk basketball, NBA. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, from this seat, after looking at Game 2, of the Western Conference Finals. I believe Golden State is in the finals. Right, let's be clear. Luka Doncic is a tremendous scorer. He's an offensive juggernaut. He's not LeBron James. He's not Jordan. Because both of those guys at this stage of their careers, right, when they're young, were defensive stalwarts. Right? I believe uh, LeBron made something like six all-defensive teams. Uh, Jordan, of course, made at least three more than that. Those guys were shut down defenders. Luka, against an offensively gifted team with great, not good, but great three-point shooters at times, Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Jordan Poole, Right? Does it have the defensive presence to stop the Golden State Warriors on his own? Now, Dallas, which has the slowest pace in the league, right, has some defensive guys, but they're not two-way players. Right? They're not, they're not the kind of guys who can then take up the scoring slack. So I just don't think Dallas has enough. They are down 0-2. I don't believe they have enough firepower to win four of the next five games. Understand, too, Golden State really is better than advertised. Right? Draymond Green made the second team all defense. Understand, um, Looney, uh, who had a great game, too, is always there to get boards to be a big man presence on the team. The team against Memphis threw down a 70 rebound performance, right? And of course, the team vastly exceeds Dallas when it comes to deep in the playoff experience, right? Some of the guys on the Golden State Warriors have multiple rings. The Splash Brothers, Draymond, right? Looney has multiple rings. So, I think Golden State is going to be in the NBA Finals. But you need to know that this Golden State team isn't what they once were. Right? Clay Thompson can't move as well as he could before his leg injuries. Andrew Wiggins, uh, excellent defender, more athletic than most of the other guys. The team needs Andrew Wiggins. But Andrew Wiggins is beta. He's not alpha, right? He's a very good player, but he's not the guy who can get you 30 points a night. That's just not how he is built. Steph Curry is not as efficient or as consistent as he once was, right? Curry will go cold at times and become a volume shooter. And Jordan Poole can be bullied, right? Whereas Steph Curry is running around off picks. And even if you aggressively D him up, he can get a shot off. The same cannot be said about Jordan Poole, right? A very aggressive defender could shut him down. And I'm talking about below 15 points in the game. Right, so Golden State, in my opinion, is going to come out of the West. That's what I'm seeing as of May 21st. But they're vulnerable. Now let's talk about what has shocked me in the East. In Game 2, I was lucky to get the over 208, right? In part because Boston exploded and scored 127 points in the game. But I was unlucky in that I also had the Miami Heat on a money line. 
right? So that bet washed itself out. I ended up paying the casino the VIG on game two. Did not come out ahead. I'm surprised by Bam Adebayo, right? His offensive game has vanished. And the reason it's vanished is because of one of the more intriguing players in the league. You heard me talk about Robert Williams before, right? Analytical people know he's had a very high player efficiency rating, and I want you to look at it. It's higher than Jason Tatum's. Well, now we're figuring out why, because he's on the second team for the all-defensive team. Understand, Williams has shut down Bam Adebayo, and I mean shut down. Also, what I want people to do is to look closely at the voting for Defensive Player of the Year and all defensive teams. Now, Marcus Smart won Defensive Player of the Year. Understand, the system is tilted against guards. The last guy to do that was Gary Payton in the 1990s, right, from the guard position. So understand, Marcus Smart is special. But when you look at the stat sheet, even though Marcus Smart is a streak shooter and is unreliable shooting the basketball, you'll notice that Marcus Smart is a Jason Kidd type. He doesn't have to score points to be very effective because the guy gets rebounds. The guy gets assists. Well, it's scary because while Smart is on the first team all defense and while his teammate Robert Williams is on the second team all defense, understand that four other teammates got all defensive team votes. Four. Folks, an NBA starting five is only five guys. What they're telling you is the guys on the court for Boston are defensively blessed, and then guys coming off the bench are defensively blessed. Right? So Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Al Horford, and Derek White all got defensive team votes. So I didn't expect this. I understood that the Boston Celtics, in terms of the numbers, were statistically dominant this year. And that's a bit surprising. That's a bit surprising, given their poor start to the season, given the fact that they have a young coach. Right? But what really surprises me is I thought Miami would have the strength in numbers. I thought the guys on Miami's bench were going to be able to give Miami a certain freshness, a certain advantage. And what I'm finding out is that the Boston Celtics, at least as of right now, after two games in the series, look like they're the better team. Let me also say, too, that I don't consider Jason Tatum to be top shelf, right? I feel I can count on certain players, <clears throat> Kevin Durant, for example, to get their points, to fill up the stat sheet. Luka Doncic, I feel I can count on Luka, even when he's having a bad game, as he was in game one, to give me 20 points. With Jason Tatum, there's a higher level of variance, right? Again, I'm just telling you my views. I know Tatum's a whale of a player. But with Jason Tatum, I've seen him shut down offensively. I've seen games where he can't hit the side of a barn. I've seen games where he looks like he's getting roughed up, like Jordan Poole. Right? So I view Tatum as unreliable. I'm expecting a game in this series, the Miami Heat series, where Jason Tatum comes out and Jason Tatum scores something like 14 points, 
right, or 13 points, right? I don't view Tatum like I view a Jordan or a LeBron, right? Certainly not a young Jordan or a young LeBron. But I have to concede. Jason Tatum has really looked great of late, right? He really looks like a leader. He has been consistent of late. So, I don't see a bet on the board. I'm just sharing my notes. I don't see a bet on the board that I'm going to grab for game three in the Miami Heat Boston series. Right? I'll agree the over under number is a little bit low, 207 and a half, as I make this video. But this is a game where Miami really needs to make a stand. I understand, too, that Miami. Didn't look that bad in the second half of game two, right? They lose it in the first half, give up 70 points. But then I thought in the second half, Miami held serve. I'm guessing Miami is going to come out and try to get home court back in game three. I'm expecting this series to get more intense the deeper into the series it goes. But my conclusion not as a fan, just as a disinterested gambler, just looking at the teams, is that Boston seems to be better put together than the Miami Heat. Right? Jimmy Butler scored over 40 in game one. Right? That covered up a lot. The Heat went on a run in the third quarter of game one. That covered up a lot. The Miami Heat offense is out of sorts. They don't fit together. They're not as rough and tumble as the Boston Celtic core, right? The problem the Celtics have is, quite frankly, they don't have a gifted, reliable score, in my opinion. I know on the court, it looks different right now. Okay, fine. But my goodness, watching this Boston team, you almost feel like you're watching the Bulls. Right? The defense is always there. Right? And this Robert Williams guy, he's really a revelation. Right? Go back, not just this year, go back to last year and look at the guy's player efficiency ratings. Right? He is a difference maker who folds into this team construct perfectly. Keep in mind, too. The other big man, Al Herford, also got all defensive votes. Just not enough to make second team like Robert Williams did. Now, Bam Adebayo, right, he's all defensive. But let's just say Boston is the one team that seems to have, seems to have the answer to stopping him offensively with the more fouls to throw at him in terms of quality big defensive play, right? So I'm going to stay on the sidelines for game three. I need more visibility than this, right? I expect the Miami Heat to come out all guns blazing. If they don't win game three, they'll come out all guns blazing for game four. But just to understand, if Boston wins game three, on their home court, then game four becomes an existentialist threat to the Miami Heat because Miami is not going to come back from a 3-1 hole against this Boston team. Let's remember, game six in Milwaukee. On the road, the Boston Celtics delivered against the defending champs. Right? That's who this team is. They've been on a tier. They have the kind of defense, just like the Bulls. You don't see defenses like this Boston defense that often. Right? Think old Pistons. They have the kind of defense where they can stomp you out. 
right? Win games on the road, they're not supposed to, just by choking you defensively. And then having a Marcus Smart or someone like that hit some threes, right? As I've said, they don't have a young LeBron. They don't have a young Jordan. They don't have a Kevin Durant. The real secret to this team is their defensive ferocity. Let me make another point, too. And this is really what I'm gunning for. Now, they've adjusted the futures market, where right now you're not getting enough return on the Warriors or the Boston Celtics. But let's not kid ourselves. If the Boston Celtics take on the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals, I'm expecting Boston to give Golden State problems, right? Golden State is very good defensively as well. But there were times in that Memphis series where Memphis's defense looked too physical for the Golden State Warriors, right? Understand, the Warriors have certain things going for them that Boston doesn't have. Right? The Warriors, in my opinion, and I don't care what the numbers say, are more explosive offensively. Right. Also, you give me Steve Kerr, a head coach with rings, right? with Mike Brown, who's spectacular in the playoffs when Steve Kerr's out. Right? You give me that coaching team against a young first-year coach, and I'll take Steve Kerr every time. Right? But don't kid yourself. This Boston defense isn't the kind of defense you see every year. I believe they're going to take Jordan Poole out of the finals. Right? And I believe they're going to then, uh, you know, be able to slow down Steph Curry or Clay in a given day, depending on their defensive schemes. Keep in mind at the guard position. One of their guys, Marcus Smart, won Defensive Player of the Year. Right? This Boston team, I'll just put it to you this way. This is the closest I've seen Boston to winning a title in several years. Right? They're better than I thought they were at the start of this Miami Heat series. They're better than I thought they were at the start of these playoffs, right? This is the team where at the end of the year, when people were trying to flee, playing the Brooklyn Nets and Kevin Durant, uh, who I feel is true, right? This Boston team decided, hey, you know, we're not going to sit our players down like the Bucks did. Right, the Bucks played the Nets last year, had enough of the Nets. They were like, hey, let somebody else play them. Right, three seed, we'll take the three seed. Boston grabbed the two seed. In an interview, I saw Marcus Smart just flatly say, well, we're going to have to play them anyway. And I thought, whoa, what, what Mar <laughs> Marcus Smart is just assuming that the Boston Celtics are going to make it deep into the playoffs where they'd have to play other quality teams. Well, understand, Boston's gone through Durant, Boston's gone through Giannis to get to this point, right? There's a swag and a confidence about this Celtic team that should not be overlooked by gamblers. Let me close by saying this, and I know it's an unpopular position. I get it. I see that Giannis again made first team all defense. Right now, understand, as a two time MVP, as an MVP of the NBA Finals, as a guy with several of these first team all defenses, Giannis is certainly a Hall of Famer, right? I'll agree with all of that, right? But Giannis's game doesn't have the high ceiling 
that let's say someone like Joker's game does. In other words, while Giannis, who's certainly a better defender than Joker, I'm not saying Joker is defensively blessed. We're not here talking about Joker making any defensive team this year, right? But while Giannis is certainly a better defensive player, offensively, right? Joker has more range. Joker's the more historical player, right? Talent's a weird thing, right? Joker is just the much better passer. While Giannis holds his team together well, and I'm talking, I'm comparing two guys who have both won multiple MVPs. While Giannis holds his team together, while the team certainly goes through Giannis, I would argue that Joker is the person who's able to elicit the most out of his teammates, right? I don't think Giannis would have had Denver's win total with Joker's supporting cast, right? Because Joker is a playmaker. So one of the problems, when I talk with friends about the NBA, one of the problems that always appears is friends will talk to me about someone's performance, and I can't argue with it, right? I'll concede, again, for the third or fourth time in this video, Giannis is a better defender than Joker, right? It's really hard to place a value on the guy's skill set, the total range, right? Put differently, when I look at Jason Tatum, 6'8", and I see Tatum's athleticism, and I see Tatum, you know, will fill up the box score on some nights. I never confuse that with a historical type guy like Kevin Durant, right? Who might not get the defensive votes that Jason Tatum gets, right? I might have to concede Tatum's a better defender than Durant. But you understand that Durant can literally carry a team, not for a night, but for a week, right? You understand when Durant gets hot, just like with Jordan, everyone in the building knows he's going to get the ball, and there's nothing the other team can do to stop him. You understand the level of shooting is going to be above average every night. Right? With Jason Tatum, you don't know that. With Giannis, the problem is he plays so close to the rim, right? And he's not the kind of person who keeps defenses guessing like Joker does, right? Just one man's opinion, right? I don't place Giannis. As great as he is, I'd certainly vote for him for the Hall of Fame as soon as he hits the ballot. Right? He has the ring. Something a Joker doesn't have. But I wouldn't place Giannis where I would place a Joker or where I would place a guy who's getting dissed in the media right now. A James Harden. Right? Those guys, to me, just in terms of skills... Right? Maybe not first team all defense or stuff like that. Maybe not in the ring category. Right? But I would place those guys ahead of someone like Giannis, who strikes me as a little bit of an overachiever. I would place those guys ahead of someone like Jason Tatum. Maybe Tatum's going to prove me wrong. Right? This seems to be the year for him to do so. He has the horses on his team. That's how I see it. I'm going to sit out game three of this Miami Heat-Boston uh, series, but I suspect Boston's a superior team, right? I suspect Boston has some aces 
that fans don't even know about that much. Who enters the room and says, hey, I'm, I'm voting for Robert Williams for the All-Star game? Right? Folks, the guy's player efficiency rating is over 20. He just made the second team all defense. Understand, Williams is not the tallest guy. Like Bill Russell, though, he knows how to play defense. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.